All right, that's your advice, Four of Pentacles. It's time to go big or go home, Virgo. That's kind of the message here. But I get it. I absolutely understand it now. Energy, I'm going to say this to you, and I've been reminding everyone of this, especially the way that I read the cards. I don't believe we can knock, uh, lock the energy into one vibration. One of the reasons I don't read reversals, because I think it's our choices that reverse the energy of that card or, you know, whether we go with it. And that, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with reversals. There's times in my life, there's still times in my life that I will use reversals when they're needed. But we decide whether it's the highest vibration of the energy we're going to use or the lowest. And there's no wrong choice. Sometimes you need to go delve into the deeper, darker places. So I'm, gonna, I'm saying that because I'm going to read this in two different ways. The Knight of Pentacles is the, he's the most hardworking knight. Your energy, this is the card for Virgo, it's Virgo energy. He shows up, he gets it done. He's the perfectionist. He's going to make sure that each step of that job or whatever he's trying to achieve, he gets it right. He gets it right. He's like, right, next step, have I done this right? Let me make sure all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed. Is this done? Done? Great. Let's move on to the next step. So he's very methodical in the way that he works. But in that one step at a time, you know, staying tr true to the course, showing up every day, he gets the job done. And I always think he's the most reliable of the knights. The rest of them will get a new idea and run off or something else inspires them or they have a dream and they kind of um, lollygag around. But he gets it done. He's going to show up and do it. That's great. The darker side of the Knight of Pentacles is that he can hesitate unnecessarily. Why? Because he doesn't see the plan. He's like, I need a perfect plan before I can act on this. And sometimes the plan, it's going to pan out when you take that next step. So if you take that next step. So I always feel like the Knight of Pentacles needs to trust himself more. Trust that he can bring that work ethic to any situation. He's going to make it happen. That there won't always be a perfect plan. And he doesn't always need the approval. Sometimes the Knight of Pentacles come when we're trying something new. That shows up with the Ace of Swords there. When we're kind of going in a different direction. So we're kind of feeling our way. We're learning something new. We're going in, you know, we're creating something new. And it's okay to stumble. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to be unsure of yourself. Because you're going in a different direction. It's not something that you're used to. Now, there's that energy. And then we have the High Priestess with the Knight of Pentacles. Now, what's her thing? She is... The keeper of all secrets, the keeper of all knowledge. She has access to the ethereal realms, you know, the tarot and all of this other, <clears throat> excuse me, all the spiritual kind of knowledge that we have. The Akashic records, records, the collective unconscious knowledge that we're all tapped into. She knows all of that. So when she shows up in your reading, she's telling you, you know, you know, you know which direction to put your effort into. You know where to go. You might not know it on a physical level. That's the Hierophant card. He's the uh, her um, representative on Earth, her earthly rep um, partner. But it's about what we do with it. Now, she's very passive energy. She doesn't always act on the knowledge. And when she shows up in your reading, she's telling you, you know, that's trust your gut feeling, trust your instincts. That's going to be frustrating for the Knight of Pentacles because he wants to see the physical results. He wants the physical plan, the guarantee of where am I going? What am I doing? So the great aspect of this is that some of you are going purely on faith, purely on your gut. You're still going, you're going slowly, but you're doing it purely on what you know, on what your faith is telling you, on what your instinct is telling you, your intuition. Intuition is key at this time. But others of you, you know that you could go faster. You know that, you know, you just on that gut feeling, but you're not trusting it because you're thinking, well, it's not sh it's not being shown to me. So it's going to be on that spectrum. You know, some of you are going to fall at the more kind of, I don't know what to do with realm. And other people are going to be like, well, screw it. I kind of know it. I don't see it, but I'm just going to go give it a go. Now, interesting that the Wheel of Fortune comes up. Um, actually, hang on a second. Let me, before I get to the Wheel of Fortune, let's talk about the tower. I understand why you'd hesitate. Because you've had bloody shit crashing down around you for a while now. The tower's coming up in the past. It's the foundation. Last week, last month, last year. It might be a series of tower moments you know, that have been reverberating through your life. But I gave like a mini um, tarot lesson, actually. I was talking about this kind of part of the Major Arcana on um, Instagram. I think it was last week or the week before. I was talking about this. And the tower always frees us. The card before the tower is the devil. It's liberating. It's freeing. It doesn't always feel that way. It's like you might be kind of, even though you're bound up, 
and you but it can feel like free falling right we're being pushed out of an airplane yeah we're free but it's that kind of thing of what no i was okay in that airplane you know that kind of energy so the tower frees us but it's where we're starting from scratch something that you you might have relied on a relationship your way of thinking this can be an epiphany an awakening it's gone whatever that security was that you had so maybe something that you worked very hard on that you built it's fallen apart now, the great news about this is that you are moving in another direction now. You have an idea, even at a very base level, you have an idea of which way to go. But it's okay to hesitate. You would, right? If you spent time working and building something before and it's smashed down around you, of course you're going to hesitate. It's okay to own that. There's no judgment here. But it's always owning where we are, owning where we are. Looking at our motives for where we are. Why am I being this way? Okay, I understand it's because of this. Now you have the Wheel of Fortune coming up at the heart of your reading. Love this card. Love it. It's um, it's about fate. But what is fate? It's those things that happen to us in our life, right? The people that show up or the losses that we experience. This can be a loss. Whatever it is, we don't have control over that, over the thing that happens outside of us, the physical. But we do have control over how we choose to experience that, what we choose to do with that. Now, the Wheel of Fortune can talk about a second chance at something. And in which case, think about that. You're hesitating. You're going slowly. You're trying to make this work. But at the back of your mind is going to be this. Because that's what the mind does. It's always historical. It goes back over, well, this happened last time and that happened. But the, it's not the same. That's what the Wheel of Fortune is telling you. It's telling you that wheel has turned. Just because it fell apart before doesn't mean it's going to now. The whole point of the Wheel of Fortune is we begin a new cycle here. The energy has shifted. It's changed now. There's new opportunities coming in for change. But we're asked to do them differently. We're asked to, you know, come forward and take advantage of those opportunities in a different way. We've already had one go at this cycle. We learned whatever we needed to learn from that. And I do see the Knight of Pentacles as a student sometimes, even the, the Page of Pentacles as a student. But now you know from that. So it's like, all right, like, I'm going to do this differently. If you keep doing what you did, you're going to keep getting what you got. So this card encourages us that, hey, you can have another shot at this. Doesn't have to be the exact same situation. Different person, different job, different whatever it is, different dream that you're pursuing now. But you're going to do it in a different way. Now, the thing that can be disconcerting for earth signs, trust me, I know, um, is that unless it's right in front of us, unless we can see, feel, touch it, you know, it doesn't exist, right? Sometimes the whole thing of it being an idea or just a feeling, that's not enough. It's like, how does that translate into the physical? How does it translate into the physical? You translate into the physical. You bring the earth energy. I have people say this, like, Libra say it to me all the time as well, that, you know, I need balance. And I'm like, uh -huh, you are the balance. You are the balance. So as the earth energy, you bring that, that kind of groundedness and that earthy, beautiful energy. Earth energy is seen as the slowest energy because it's solid, it's real. Thoughts can be fleeting, emotions can be fleeting. That inspiration comes up from nowhere. And yet to build something, to physically build it, that takes time. But you guys can do it. Now, of all of this, and we're being told, you know, the time is now. Go take this opportunity or go create the opportunity. What is an opportunity? It's a doorway that is presented to us. But first of all, we have to notice it. We have to notice the doorway and then we have to walk through it. There's a card actually in the Wisdom of the Oracle, that's Treasure Island. And it says, you can see the map, you can have the map. Even if you know where X marks the spot, but you still need to go and identify where the X is, dig it up and then pull out the treasure, right? And that's what you're being called to do now. But how are you going to do it? It's the how. Ace of Swords in the present. This makes sense. The cycles run from the Aces to the Tens, right? So we've got the Ace is the beginning and it always begins with us. It's an opportunity for a new beginning. The Ace of Cups, how I feel. Ace of Pentacles, what's the potential I see here in this to grow this? Ace of Wands, what inspires me? What am I looking to create? The Ace of Swords is what is my truth? And that truth has been hard fought for because the Ten of Swords, the cycles run from the Ace to the Ten, like I said. And so we're starting again, but the Ten of Swords just happened before this. Getting stabbed in the back, being left in the dirt with Ten Swords in your back that can leave a nasty aftertaste, right? If you've gone through something very difficult and you have, the Tower says that. But this is where we get a new truth out of it. We have a new philosophy. We have a new way of communicating. We have new ideas now. Swords, our thoughts, our beliefs, our ideas and how we communicate them. And I want to say this. It does feel like you're taking steps towards building this. And 
this is one of those readings that I feel like is like, keep going, keep going, Virgo. Because the slower you go, the more it's hard to kind of pick up the momentum then, right? If we keep going, if we're using the momentum of what we're doing, it's going to go faster, not slower. But this kind of feels like a kind of slowing down. So you're being reminded, have a look at what you believe. What are the ideas? What's the information that you need? This is a victory card. And the victory of this, even though some of you might feel like you've had a disaster or you've had a loss or something, the, there is a victory out of it. And the victory is, it's given you fresh ideas. It's given you a new truth. It's given you a new sword of truth. Go out there and use that sword now. Take that out into the world. Communicate in that way. Talk about your ideas. Because she, she keeps things hidden and secret. Some of you might be literally, and I don't usually talk about, you know, the mundane representations of this energy because you can apply them in any way you want. Sometimes it's going to be working on something in secret and it's kind of saying, hey, the time is now. Let's go take it out there. Let's go talk about this now. Let's go act on this. And if you can identify what your sort of truth is, if you can grab that sword and say, this is my truth. This I'm going to go forward. These are the ideas that I have. This is what I need to know. This is, you know, all of that stuff. It leads to this, Ten of Pentacles, beautiful energy. Ten of Pentacles, it's our legacy. It's what we are committed to. It's what we show up every day and get done. It's why he shows up every day and gets it done. I see the Ten of Pentacles as the oak tree, that mighty oak tree that has stood there for hundreds of years as no one's taking it down. And to have that oak tree, it all starts off with a seed and our commitment to grow it until it becomes this. So a lot of you are now figuring out, well, if I believe this now, think about it. If I believe this now, if I have a new truth, then maybe my path has changed. Maybe the things I want to work on have changed. You know, maybe I want a family or what, how I want to support other people has changed. Something has changed. Wheel of Fortune above this. What does it mean for you? What does it mean for your path? What does it mean for your legacy? And it's the commitment to get it done. It's long-term security and stability, the Ten of Pentacles. So amazing, right? Except why is your advice the Four of Pentacles? That's why I feel like you are kind of going, there is still a fear here. And I, it's, it's implied more because that's the, because of that. There's almost like a Ten of Swords kind of shadow hanging over this. Not just because of the Ace of Swords is there, but yeah. And it's, I know where the tower comes up because it's, some, it's something massive that went down. Some massive loss that you had. Some massive awakening or epiphany or something. The rug got pulled out from under your feet. Something has shifted, majorly shifted. But if you know that, if you have that knowledge now, that instinct, that intuition to do something, it means you might have to change directions. It means that, you know, what you're putting your effort into, it might be something different. Ten of Pentacles says this. Or you can have it. It's believing it. I can build this. I can build it, but maybe in a different way. And it has to be something different or something that calls for more. The reason I say that is because the Four of Pentacles is coming up here. This is the comfort zone. Now, Again, remember, higher, lower vibrations, darker, lighter energies. That's the spectrum of each of the cards. The, the, the highest and lightest vibration of this card, you know, if we're resonating at that place, is that it's where we kind of understand that, you know, nothing, nothing ventured, nothing gained. I'm going to do that. But think about this. With the tower coming up above it, you, it's reminding you that you have gotten to a place of stability and security now. Might not be a lot. The fours are the first step. It's the first where we've built the foundation now. And so when this went down, you have now rebuilt the foundation. So it is affirming that. That is the, the lightest and the most positive use of that energy is that, look, you've got a level of security. Might not be a lot, but you've got it there. And, you know, it's something that you treasure. It's valuable to you. It's good to know what's valuable to you because you hold on to it. However, if this little elf, if she just sits there or hangs there holding onto these four pentacles, how can she get more pentacles? How can she have five, six, seven, or let alone 10 pentacles if she's all tied up with what she has here? Now, there's two ways of looking at this. Number one, if you've only reached this level of stability and security, if this is, if you just need to do maintenance for a little while, that's okay. That's okay with the four pentacles. It doesn't mean we always have to go smashing down boundaries and comfort zones. There is an opportunity to do it now. But if you think I need to maintain where I am for a little bit, then don't put too much pressure on yourself. Don't, you know, just keep going slowly. Just keep going based on I'm going to keep doing this right now. You know, don't put pressure on yourself to go more, to go further. That's not the case for all of you, though. And not even for the most of you. I think that's for a few of you. The rest of you, you want this. You see this. You see how it can, what it can become. 
In which case the four of pentacles are saying, look, it's going to make you feel vulnerable. It's going to make you feel vulnerable because this happened in the past. But unless we go and spend those pentacles, invest them, do something with them, nothing will change. You won't lose what you have. You won't lose what you have. It does reassure you of that. But it says, if you want more, then we must risk this security stability that we've got. Go forward with our new truth, our new beliefs. Put this out into the open. Because remember, she keeps everything hidden. But I don't see it as being hidden when, with the Ace of Swords coming out. Because that's speaking our truth, putting it out there. Right, let's get you some clarifiers. You can build that thing, whatever it is. Your long-term security and stability, but Six of Cups. is making our peace with the past. I actually went through a few weeks of the Six of Cups. And the true essence of the Six of Cups is when we can look back at things that they would have upset us before, they hurt us, no matter how painful they are. And they don't hurt us. Now we can think about them. Now we can look back. Sometimes I get people telling me that I don't care about the past. You talk about the past too much. And I'm like, well, the fact that you can't talk about your past or look at your past means you're, it's still affecting you. You can run, but you can't hide, right? When it comes to your past. So this is where we have the rose tinted glasses. No matter what happened, we made our peace with it. We can kind of understand how it changed us. It doesn't mean to say that it was an amazing thing that happened. It could have been something awful. But it, we think back to a time before the loss of innocence. That's what the Six of Cups is. And I love the Six of Cups in this deck because they're the same person. See by the hair, right? Same person. She's gone back to her younger self. And her younger self has a gift for her that helps her on her way. So this is that energy of, you know, was there a dream? This kind of feels like revisiting an old dream sometimes when the Six of Cups comes up. Second chance at something that you really wanted before. And maybe you were kind of naive then. You didn't have the experience to kind of do it or do it in the way that you wanted to. But you made your peace with what happened. These are happy memories from the past. I do get a strong sense of like a second chance coming in for you, Virgo, at something. There we go. Two of Cups coming out. A lot of people have been getting the, this card as well. I think one of the other side, I think Gemini might have gotten this. Two of Cups is, have a look at it. It's that whole thing of connection, support, someone that you're deeply connected with. And especially when it comes up with this, it's like, why do you have to hold on? Why do you feel like you're alone? For some of you, this whole thing is around a relationship. That you were let down in a relationship, whether it's your, you know, ex or your lover, romantic partner, a family member, your business partner, someone at work stabbed you in the back. Whatever it was, whatever caused this. Maybe you were trying to do it alone. And that's what's different now. It's saying that, hey, maybe you can partner up with someone. Two of Cups is a profound connection, a profound connection. It's where you reconnect with someone. Someone's on the same page as you. They have, their cup matches yours. But just because the two cups match, it doesn't mean that they behave in the same way, right? We can have the same emotions and you know feelings as someone else. It doesn't mean we're going to do the same thing. So there's a connection this card talks about, but it's what both people do with it. What they do with it. And so there could be a sense here, just on these two cards alone as the advice. It's like, look, how will you find that support how will you find that relationship? How will you find that connection in whichever way, whether this is something going on, something that you want or something that you desire? I say it all the time. My biggest two of cups in my life was a friendship. Nothing romantic ever happened between us. And he came in my life exactly when I needed him. But how will you find that if you're clinging to the tree? You know, it's like she could be saying, hey, I have to do this all by myself. And it's like, well, honey, let go of the tree and go find someone. Like, you know, it's that kind of energy. But I get it, because that happened the last time we tried this. But it's not the same. You're not the same. So there is love and support available to you. A second chance at something. You don't have to do it on your own. Love endures. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation. Now, that's not just love, as in romantic love and a partnership. This is our ability to love endures. We don't, you know, we might get a knock, a big knock in that one. But we can't lose faith. We can't lose faith in that. And the more we love and we find new things to love and, you know, act out of love, speak from a place of love, make our peace with the past and come from a place of love, right? Connect with others. We'll find other people to love. We'll find other people that love the things that we love, that love us for exactly who we are, for speaking our truth. I said this today, actually, in a post on Instagram, you know, because I get it all the time. I had someone send me a message saying, hey, I don't mean to be rude, um, but I don't like the messages. Can you, can you, like, they were demanding readings and stuff for me, which I'd only ever do what I want to do. 
And so I was talking about that and I said, it doesn't, and she said, I love you at the end. Like, it was a very sweet message, a demanding one. Um, but you know, she was being sweet about it. She wasn't hateful or nasty to me. And I said, you can put an infinite number of I love yous at the end of a message or whatever, right? But if you're saying, if you're saying, um, you know, do this, I love you, then what you're saying is I will love you when you change. If you do what I want you to do, then I will love you. That's not love. That is not love. So, you know, hold those people close to you. I will say this, that who you can speak your truth and they accept you for that. And they don't put up with it. They love you because of who you are, not despite who you are. That's what love is. Thank God. Ooh, I love it. You guys got the fates. And I always see this card as, like the star card. It's that new beginning, the hope that comes from a new beginning. What is number 17? The tower is number 16. So it is like the star. It comes in after this. So let's be clear on something. This is what the fate, the fates is the serenity prayer. It's the serenity prayer. And what is the serenity prayer? It's um, God, the universe, source spirit, whatever you believe in. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things that I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. So it's that whole thing. If we're going to go for this, let's go. Let's go for it. If we're not going to go for it, if we just think that this is not, then we have to release it, let it go. So we can go focus on things that we do know that we want to work on. That's where this comes in. You will know that with the Ace of Swords. That is your truth. What are you going to do with that truth? What are you going to build with this truth? But the fates, the wheel of fortune, they're all saying this. If you want to do it, there's no time like the present. There's no time like the present. If you're not going to do it, then release it, let it go. But it's that thing, and I talked about this um, in a post that I did, uh, and I talked about it in a podcast that I did as well, recent, the last one that I did, where people are afraid to jump. They're on these piddly little rafts, and they're afraid to jump off into the sea, right? And it's fine. If you think that I'm safe here, I can do this. This is where I want to be. I'm, I want to stay safe. I want to maintain my stability. Then that's amazing. But it's where we're not enjoying our raft, and we're kind of longing for something outside of there. And that will drive you nuts. It will drive you nuts. So either we enjoy where we are and accept it and just ignore the view for a little bit. Or we just say, right, the raft, it's been great, but I'm off to go do something else. But it's when we have one foot in both places, right? It's maddening. And that's what this says. 